computer. All right, man. I think we're good to go, dadgummit. Um, there we go. Hey, Jake, thanks for joining, man. Hey, my pleasure, Mo. <laughs> uh, it was a process downloading this, uh, all these apps to get on this Zoom thing, and I'm not computer savvy, tech oh, savvy. No. Keep that in mind when we're talking about products, because <laughs> if I can use it, anyone can. <laughs> That's how that goes. Oh, man. Jeez. Well, no, so this is... Uh, everyone, everyone knows Jake McLaughlin. He's a, a good friend, but also just a, just a study. He started his career in the military and then, uh, got into acting most recently was on Quantico and is in the process of, of, uh, some other pretty cool films coming up here. Uh, <laughs> but both of us for sure though, are fans of Vortex Optics and, uh, Vortex has, has, uh, Actually, Jake, you got, you're the one that got me into all this stuff, man. Yeah, because that, I'm a big that, fan. Yeah, that Diamondback. But, but yeah. since then, we've been going on a little rampage and such and uh, just wanted to talk about some of our new toys from Vortex and maybe at one time talk with Vortex. Uh, down yeah, I'd like to do that. That'd be fun. They've been, they've been awesome. Yeah, I threw that, uh, you know, just starting off because I always just – I'm not, you know, I don't go out and go buy like the most expensive scope right off the bat. You know, I like to check it out and see how the glass is and how, you know, how it works for me. So I, pay, I started off with that Diamondback on that and I put it on my 17 HMR and that and I was like, actually, yeah. like, and that's what I keep noticing about the, about the Vortex is that just bang for the buck. I don't think there's a better company as far as optics are concerned, even not even close, not even close. Oh. You want, like, the comparable, comparable glass that they use on their optics is like, right up there with you know the zeiss the swarovskis the you know the Callies and all that stuff it's just yeah. it's it's insane it really is i'm they're, they're doing a bang up job over there they are kicking back and other the other thing though too we have a common friend named mick and mick was even talking about all that stuff right oh yeah he's bought a few already too himself he uh yeah when he was uh he actually was one of the ones that was giving me a lot of advice when uh, when I was asking him about some of the things because I get people that call me all the time. I just had my buddy uh, that I play Call of Duty with, uh, especially a lot more now since the since the uh, quarantine. But uh, but he he just bought one of those uh, FN uh, SPR Tacticals and he didn't, he didn't know what to get and all this. And he was just sending me pictures of what you can what his options were there in California, and I'm just looking at it going. I wouldn't buy any of those because that's ridiculous <laughs> that they have all those rules and laws and all that other nonsense that makes absolutely zero sense whatsoever. Um, but luckily, the one thing in California that they don't regulate because there's no need to is optics. So it's like that's one thing that you can that you know that you can go and spend good money on, uh, yeah. and you should if you're you know in California because I mean you can't even you have to have that paddle behind the 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 pistol grip on your rifles there. So it's not even comfortable to okay. shoot. anything that you can do, I think to make your, make your shooting experience a little bit more yeah. enjoyable and comfortable. Uh, I think that in Cal, especially in California is with um, optics are where you're going to, where, where you should start. So I, he called me up and was just sending me pictures of all his stuff and asked me what he, what he should get. And I was like, dude, ba 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 And then some things I won't know or don't really, just because I don't use them or, you know, because I'm pretty specific to what I like. Oh, and yeah. So I'll call Mick and I'll be like, hey, what do you, what do you, you know, what, what do you, what brand do you recommend for this and that and blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah. um, so I'll fill them in on that. But he got, he ended up getting the, uh, he ended up getting the um, Strike Fire too. I talked, I talked him into the getting that because he was looking at some other company stuff and they just looked like, I don't know. It looked like you were putting a brick on the top of your, you know, it just looked like it weighed eight pounds and it was just this ridiculous thing for, cause I like red dot sites a lot, like red dot for depending on what you get. Cause when people call and ask you what kind of, what kind of, you know, rifle should I get? What kind of weapon should I get? And it's like, well, for, you have to ask yourself, what do you want to use it for? What's it going to be for? Is it going to be for long range, you know, rifle? Is it going to be for home defense? Is it going to be for something that's just a good all around versatile weapon? So that's where you have to start. First of all, what do you want to use it for? And the gun guys like myself, we're all just, well, I need one for everything. You know, I can't just, I'm not just going to, I need a, I need one for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, at 3.30, 4.30. So it's just like you get into it and that's where you get into the, you know, the things. But so when he told me that that's what he bought was that FN, uh spr was i i the first thing i thought was you know obviously red dot for me personally just because you know it's a five five six round so it's a great round 
but you're not going to be doing mile shots with it and stuff like that. So for me, you can get the best of both worlds. So I, I, I opted for this, the strike fire too, which is a red dot site or green dot. You can switch it very easily. Like I said, if I can use it, <laughs> anybody, anybody can use it. It's, it's ridiculously easy. And then, uh, and then I got the uh, three times magnifiers to put behind it. So you just, here, I'll, I'll pull it out. Oh, dude, that's sweet. The, the sweet. scope. Oh, yeah. I'll pull the yeah. scope out. <laughs> yeah. The optic, here. So I don't, I don't have it mounted yet because I was, you know, going to start building that AR with Dave. And yeah. uh, then the lockdown happened. So we can't, I don't have anything to put it on yet. So all you do really is you just, you know, put this on your rifle. Right. You know, for your red dot, regular red dot optic. Then you put this behind it and it's a three times magnifier. So it's, you know, it's, a three, it's basically like having a three power scope on your, on your rifle behind it. And if right. you don't want to use that and you want to keep it close, you just flip it off to the side. <laughs> that, so that you to, yeah, that's sweet. To do that. And it's just, I mean, it's just, it's just cool stuff. And then the other thing about these too is like just the hardware on them. Yeah. It's sort of like when I was looking for, that. We, my wife and I were looking for fridges down in Sacramento one time before we moved up here. And we're just looking at what, you know, stainless steel fridge we want. We're actually not even down there looking for fridges. We were looking for <laughs> sinks or something. I don't remember what the hell it was. <laughs> but we saw this fridge and it was called, uh, what was it, Calis? No, what it, not Cal. no, I'm thinking size. Me, me, Mele? Me, Mele? Oh, yeah, 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 the M-I-E-L-E. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. It's like, a, I don't know what, who, where, who makes it or where it's from, but I was just opening those, you know, just opening and closing them and just feeling, because you look, you know, you get some of those other fridges that are just, you know, nice brands, but they're not, yeah. they're not, they're, they're mass produced and you, you're opening and opening the drawers and they just kind of feel weak and plasticky and you're just like, ah, my kids are going to tear this shit up in no time. And then I go over to that thing. We didn't buy it because they're, you know, they're pretty pricey, but right. uh, I just opened it. I was like, God, this, this feels like I'm opening a safe and the hinge, just the hinges and the hardware on this thing are just sturdy and strong. It's like, it was insane. That's what impressed me the most. I don't know how great it keeps temperature or whatnot. I just like the feel of opening something that was just, you know, you know, could withstand a nuclear blast practically. So it was, it was, it was pretty cool. So that, and that's what you, that's what I saw when I, when I, when I got these and I opened them, like everything's the, the hardware on them is so firm and it's so yep. well put together. It's just, and trust me, people go around, depending on what you're doing, a lot of people, you know, they baby everything that they have and they take really good care of everything they have. I'm probably not in that category. I beat no. my stuff up, everything <laughs> from my trucks to, well, to everything, you know, I'm, setting things down and bam, bam, bam. I, you know, I, in fact, when I bought my truck, I went out and scratched the hell out of it just so I could get it out of the way and not. Well, dude, the other day not, when you took a four wheel and you didn't yeah. take care of it there, man. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I can, I can validate that uh, you're, you're hard on your, uh, on every, all of the equipment that you get there. But you yeah, know, it, I, it, I beat it up. It's interesting. Don't though, tough, baby. No, no doubt about that. And if you, <laughs> You'll have to ask uh, one time on uh, Jake and and what he he did on uh, Quantico with Ford. I mean, not Ford trucks, but with uh, the Tundra. It's it's uh, no, that was that, the that's story for another day, man. <laughs> uh, uh. <Yeah. laughs> but no, so you got me going here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this out here. But after you're talking about Vortex, you know, I I got all giddy and then got some of these bad boys here. The Vortex, uh, the, the Viper 10 by 42s. Holy oh yeah, God, man! Th these are ones that I used hunting at one time, and yeah. we were duck hunting. I yeah. can't believe it. You remember a couple of times we were we were hunting, and then we got in on some of those those golden eyes real quick because of oh my gosh, that was an absolute massacre. That was ridiculous. <laughs> Let me see here real quick. Hold on a second. Bro. Yeah, man. Heck yeah. yeah. Yeah, your cat's kicking it back up there on the couch. <laughs> oh, you know what? Mine are actually, mine are actually, that's the one thing, mine are in my truck. Is your, your, oh, dude, yeah, you have some pretty good, what Oh, mine are ridiculous, and I, they're in my truck. They're actually, those are actually in my truck, because you said we're going shooting tomorrow, so <laughs> I wanted to make sure I, I brought those, because I always forget things when I'm going, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, let's go shoot, so all I'm, all I'm thinking about is how much ammo I have and what guns I'm going to, what rifles I'm going to bring, and so, yeah. that's, that's that, but I, yeah, the, I have the, uh, the Kai Bobs yeah uh, the from from vortex and those things and the thing about those 
that's just so that about binoculars and a good set of binoculars is if you're because I'm new to the hunting out here I moved out to Idaho so I'm new to the hunting out here and where I, in northern California where I'm from uh and when we go hunting it's not really set up for a lot I mean not saying that you can't do it unless you're up in like the northeastern part of the state where it's a little bit more long range and there's mule deer and stuff like that up there uh, up in like the x zones and you know last in an area but typically hunting up there we don't get to hunt during the rut in California for, for deer. So it's pre-rut. So it's still really hot. The bucks are still in, a lot of them are still in velvet. And, uh, and they're just, the bucks are just kind of running around, you know, testing their, their metal with each other and doing that. They're not quite at that point where they're following the does yet around. So, so a lot of the hunting you do is just kind of driving around up in the mountains and, you know, looking for decent spots or, or lucking across you know, a deer, which is, it's just hard. It's just a little bit tougher hunting. You got to really cover a lot of ground. Exactly. And uh, so the binocular thing for me there wasn't as, it, it wasn't as necessary because yeah. it was, I didn't, I couldn't see very far out because the, the, the you know, the Sierra Nevadas are, you know, thickly forested exactly. area. They're nice to have just in case you think you might see something, but out here in Idaho, it's so open and so spread out. And like when you see mule deer and I can't tell you, going around and looking, looking for mule deer. If you have a good pair of binoculars, there's a mule deer, you know, 800 meters away, 700 meters away that you would have never seen with your naked eye. And you're just kind of glassing the area and looking around and yeah. there's buck brush everywhere and sage and whatnot. You can actually tell the difference if there's a mule deer buck that's just kind of laying down and resting. And you can tell that those are antlers and not manzanita branches <laughs> that are sticking out of the top of the buck brush there. So it's not, it's it that's where the that's where a big difference comes in when you have that good glass there's yeah. not a lot of strain on your eyes there's a lot of eye relief that's the other thing with the vortex optics there's a ton of eye relief yeah so you're you're out there doing things you're not having to go oh yeah. god my eyes are tired my eyes are tired everything's you know killing me and this and that all i'm doing is spending my day glassing but i can't even i couldn't even see it you know it's just that, that's what makes it so nice to have that that next step up so the way my thought process is this if you're going to go buy three, four pairs of binoculars just up the ladder right? To until you get to a really good pair of binoculars. I'd rather save up to get, if you can, I'd rather save up to get the nicer pair and just buy them once. Oh, yeah. I yeah, do yeah. believe that you, you, you get what you pay for. And those binoculars that you have right there, they're fantastic. Everything that, you, everything that you'd want out of them, you're going to get out of them. Yep. You know, it's just like my, per, my personal thing when I purchase things is I do believe, I believe you get what you pay for. And I, I'd rather buy it once than four times. Oh yeah. And everything, like I said, everything's so sturdy on these things. Yeah. You can drop the hell out of them. The hardware, everything's on, everything on. It's just fantastic. And you have a problem with it. You just send it back in. They'll fix it. And see, that's what blew my mind, man. They have, they actually have pictures on their site of people sending in stuff that it's gnarled beyond recognition. Yeah. And they still fix it or replace it or whatever. It blows my mind. But the other thing too is, I, there was a few other scope companies I dealt with, and you know, you get once in a while you get the really good customer service, and and it, it keep you there for a bit. Yeah. But um, what's blowing my mind is every time I call Vortex, it's like they're bending over backward for you. It's it, it's yeah. been pretty cool uh, for, for, my, for my experience, you know. So, yeah. No, that's been that's been my experience as well, and everyone that I've talked to, and that's what I think what I think that. You know, I know that that's what I want, what you want. Yeah. I think that's what people want. People like that, even though it's, a, you know, it's become a, a, a big company now and it's a great company, it still has that ma and pa feel to it where they're willing to, where they're willing to, to take care of you. It's, I'm not calling somebody from some other country that, you know, I can't understand that's, you know, that doesn't understand what my problem is or anything. It's, it's just, um, it's, it's really nice to have that, to be able to get that, that quality, you know, it almost feels like you're calling like an uncle that owns a company that that makes optics, and you're like, "Hey, uncle, blah blah blah, can you, you know, this this your, that scope you gave me is messed up. I'll just send it in. I'll fix it. I'll send it right back to you." It's like that, you know, yeah. and, and that's what that's what that's what that's what American companies are all about. That's okay. what that's what it's that's what it is, and that's why people like American made and American companies so much is because they do those kinds of. Oh things. yeah, those, well, they started from small and they built themselves up, and they know what it, they know what it's about. Well, yeah. the, the nice thing though too is, again, you got me going. I'm looking at some of these other optics over here, but you you're looking at you got that uh, you got the diamond back on your 17 HMR. I still can't believe how accurate it was with yeah. that thing. 
But yeah. then even from that, that, that uh, it's a, it's a lower price optic, but then even to the AMG, you got an AMG, right? You got that yeah. big bad boy over there. Oh, right here? Yeah. This, yeah, that, that was a little tough. This, isn't going, this isn't going on the 17. Yeah, that's not going on the 17. I mean, that's no. something we'll definitely have to talk to folks about, but uh, of, of what to put, properly put it on. But what blew me away is not only the optical quality of it, but how light it was, man. Because I'm, so while you're showing them that, I'm, I'm going to show you, you because, because uh, you know, I can't, I can't afford that one worth a, a, a hoot, but I got this one right here, the Viper PST. Yeah. And it's heavy and it's awesome. This thing is, it, it's going to go, it'll probably go on my 223. Just yeah, let me we, tested, we tested them and you say it's heavy, but we remember you, you brought that over yeah. here. I remember yeah. talking with you about that and it wasn't, there wasn't a huge difference. It was definitely a little heavier, but it wasn't, it wasn't a huge difference. And, right. You know, and to me, uh, that's not a huge deal anyways, even if it was just because most of the time, if I'm shooting with a scope like this, most likely it's going to be long range and yeah. I'm going to have to buy a bipod down or I'm going to be on some shooting bags or something. So I'm not, I'm not shoulder firing it as, as it were, or I'm using a shooting stick or something. I'm not carrying the brunt to that weight. Plus, I mean, I was, I was also a saw gunner, so a little extra weight on a scope is not going to. Not gonna do, not gonna do much for me. Not gonna bother. No, and that's me. actually that's what blows my mind is when you think of Hollywood. Um, in one thing, I mean, this is this is so off tangent, but you're one of the rare guys that have, was in the military before that time, so you know a lot more from a weaponry perspective than than most people in Hollywood. I, I think you well, were yeah. advising people on that, to, even in some. Of the except movies, maybe, right? except except maybe, uh, maybe uh, Keanu Reeves. Now I think he's. Got, <laughs> Kicking everyone's ass right now, guys. Guys, next level. <laughs> he is next level. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love. I absolutely love it because he does jujitsu too. So I like. I love. He's a. You know, he's into martial arts, and I love that he's just. You know, dives into whatever he's he he likes and is passionate about. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I grew up shooting. I grew up hunting. I grew up shooting. I grew up doing all that stuff. You know, like my uncle had an AR in California before all the regs you know, came out. So I was raised shooting that and knew the names and how to take it apart of every component of the rifle. So I went to basic training and they were have, they were teaching us the components of the AR in class and teaching us how to take it apart with the names where the extractor pin retaining pin, you know, the bolt carrier key, all that stuff. Uh, I already knew all that. So I was able to get the, the drill sergeants because, you know, we're, they're kind of outnumbered. They, they allowed me to go up and help everyone else, help other people in the class along with the drill sergeants to go okay. show them like, oh, he, I mean, I knew it is, you know, I knew it because it was one thing that I wanted to learn inside and out before I ever even went in just to give myself a little bit of an advantage. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's, and it's been great just because it's carried over into Hollywood and everything else, because it's not just for me, because I know what I'm doing. I don't need to worry about myself, but yep. Yep. Uh, but when you're dealing with other actors that have never been around firearms or even aren't comfortable with firearms or <laughs> whatever, so funny you know, it stories, is, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is what it is. But there's sometimes. But you also don't want anything to look bad. You don't want them to look bad because if they look bad, you know, you want you want everything that you're working on to be, you know, as good as it can be. Exactly. Uh, and so um, it's nice to be able to go up to the other actors and actresses and just tell, you know, say, hey, no, you should hold it like this. This is better. And when you come in this room. If you're gonna, you know, kick this door, and this is how you, this is how you clear a room and do all that stuff, just so they don't look like an absolute soup sandwich when they're walking in there, you know, they're holding the gun around, whatever they're, you know, whatever they're doing. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it all. It seems, you know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of funny stuff happen, but usually I try to, I try to, you know, get that, no doubt, under control. Well, no, you were. You were a sniper in one. I haven't seen the show yet, but I think you were a sniper in one of those movies with. Uh, what was the one you were in with Travolta? Uh, that was Savages. Yeah, were you a sniper in that one or something like that? Yeah, I was. They had. Um, they. It was cool because we had. There was a couple cool, really cool scenes that were in the original script that were drafted, and I was stoked because I'm a huge Aerosmith fan. <laughs> and like, one of the one of the one of the uh, scenes had us all wearing Aerosmith masks, kind of like oh, you know. <laughs> Sort of like awesome. president's masks and point point break and all that but we we went in to go raid some cartel members and kill a bunch of car i don't know exactly i can't remember now because it was years ago <laughs> but we were gonna kill some cartel members we went in there you know all just decked out with our with our full battle rattle and but wearing like the mask and like and I, I think i even told all our stone when we had when i had a meeting with them i was, I was like hey can I, can I just one request can i can i wear the steven tyler mask it would be like, <laughs> It'd be such a huge inside, like, like little, you know, thing. Because I, because when I was in the army, 
uh, I bought tickets three different times to go see Aerosmith at the, uh, I think it was down in Florida, a couple of them were at the Ice Palace or whatever. Right. One of them was Kiss and Aerosmith. Then the other one was Kid Rock, Run DMC and Aerosmith. And the other one was Cheap Trick and Aerosmith. All three times, I never got to go because I either got deployed or sent out to the field. Oh, but dang. I bought the tickets and you know, you never know your schedule in the military. So I never got to go and I've never seen them in concert. And I don't know how much longer they're going to be performing. I hope it's forever because yeah. I've never seen them in concert. I want to go, I'm dying to, I really want to see Aerosmith in concert. You know, I, I just, I don't know. It'd be fun. We yeah. got kiss tickets. We went to a fundraiser and we went to uh, one of those silent auction ones for the high school and there was kiss tickets. But now I don't know. I don't know what the, what the deal is with that now because of the lockdown, but I don't know. I think it's in September, so hopefully we'll it won't it won't. Uh, oh yeah, man! Hopefully, it won't, it, yeah. It's, I want to go. I, so we'll go see Kiss. I you know I like Kiss just fine, but I'm like, hey, if I'm gonna bid on something, I'd like to see Kiss once before I die. Why not? <laughs> Who the hell? Would, you know what? Oh, what yeah. else am I gonna be doing? <laughs> yeah, that, that Gene Simmons dude, he's an incredible businessman. I, I just read one of his books. Hell yeah, it was unreal. So, so yeah, but with the with the savages thing, uh, yeah, I played a, I played part of the the, the his his uh, old Navy SEAL sniper team that came in and helped him with his with the dilemma that they found themselves in, and uh, so we came in and just set, set up surveillance and got to blow some stuff up. It was a fun shoot. We got it was a it was a fun shoot. Um, just I like doing action stuff, you know. I don't you don't have to you don't have to give me any lines. I'll just, I'd I like just going out there and doing the kick ass stuff. I'll do I'll do whatever. I don't care. I have fun doing whatever I'm doing, but uh but that's the stuff I tend to flock to a little bit more just because it's more my wheelhouse and I and I and I enjoy it. You know, it's just it's just oh. always fun doing that stuff. So uh, it is amazing yeah. to watch I mean you're one of the hardest workers I've ever I've ever met and I mean it's it's not not just from acting standpoint, but dude, even around the yard and such. It's amazing, dude. It's crazy. well. I try. I try to. Not uh. Not much these days. I just got done with my second back surgery a few weeks ago. I had to get back in. So. <laughs> and you're moving around pretty daggum good, man. Yeah, but it's yeah. like it's like I got it. At a per it was a perfect timing because I was like one of the last cutoffs before uh, the elective surgeries right happening anymore. So I was just like I ma I made it by a couple of days. So oh, now man. that the lockdown happened, it was like okay, it couldn't have come at a better time because a Hollywood shut down. B everyone's kind of quarantined right now so yeah. now i'm just using that time but oh, it's yeah. been a year since i've been able to work out been able to do anything that i you know want to do to get myself physically back where i was before my before i had to go in for the first surgery so yeah uh, it's just a it's just a slow process and i'm not a guy that that likes to sit around <laughs> and heal up you know it's just kind of like but luckily my wife uh She's on my ass quite a bit about, about, uh, yeah, about not twisting, not bending, not lifting, not doing things. Like the, it's hard because the kids come up and I'm like, yeah, I want to hold you. I want to throw your ass around and do all sorts of crazy shit. I want to take you on the skateboard, like one of, like a little, you know, bulldog and skate you around. I want to do all that stuff, but I can't do it right now. So it's just kind of like crawling out of my own skin because I can't do things. Oh, that's but, awesome. You're still pretty stacked though, man. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Thanks, bro. Well, no, I remember. Yeah, <laughs> I remember though the the first time. I mean, you were you were lifting pretty heavy, man. So uh, yeah, I was I was doing uh, when we first got moved out here. I was Steph and I were going to the gym. I was going five days a week. I was doing kickboxing two to three times a week, and then uh, uh, and then uh, I was doing jujitsu two to three times a week. So yeah. I was just constantly going and eating. I was eating right. So my body fat percentage was down to 6% and I was just shredded. Oh, and it's always funny because I never get work when I'm looking, looking like that. You know, <laughs> you start, you start like, that was like probably the best shape I've been in in a long, long, long time. You know, probably since basic training. And then, uh, and then, you know, the back thing happens and, and, you know, you never get it. Cause it's kind of like when you start a job on, in, like, especially on a TV series and stuff, oh, yeah. Um, you know, I try to be in shape and I, you know, for going into it, I try to stay, I always try to stay in shape, but you work such long hours. Like on Quantico, we work such long hours every single day. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that you don't have time. You don't have time to eat right. You don't have time to, to, you try to set the time aside, but you don't. So it's like, all right, guys, if you, uh, if you want me shirtless in this scene and anything, let's do it in the first couple episodes because this is all going away pretty soon. <laughs> eating craft services and sitting there and all this weight, weight, you know, it's just like it, you, you, you start to, you start to, you know, become a little softer than hand soap pretty quickly. <laughs> That's awesome. <man. laughs> I love it. 
I freaking love it, man. That's awesome. <laughs> well, this it's is what it is. It is, dude. Well, I'll tell you what, man. This is this is fun stuff. I know we 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 started off on the the vortex thing, but it's always freaking awesome. Yeah, but hold on. There's one more thing too. The other yeah. thing I we didn't bring up, and this is one of my actually my, one of my favorite things from uh -huh. vortex. Is, is that the uh, range finder? Is this range finder? Oh, yeah. sweet! Yeah. yeah. I mean, because when these things, when range finders first came out, you were paying like for a laser range finder. If I remember correctly, as I was young, younger, I think they were like, you know, hundreds of dollars for a range finder that would only go out to like eighty, ninety. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> yeah. like, and now yeah. you can get them for the same price or way cheaper. Yeah. And this one goes. Well, I don't even know what this goes out to. This goes out to what is it? It's something crazy. You got the one that goes out to four thousand yards, dude. Four thousand. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one right there, man. <laughs> yeah, like four thousand meters. Really? Yeah. Like really? All right. You know. You know. And but and the cool thing about it too, and I've never seen it before, just because I haven't used it, because I do I bow hunt too. Yeah, yeah. I showed you my bow, right? Oh yeah, oh, dude, that bow is awesome. Yeah, Holy I got that. I got way, that carbon <laughs> element and. Uh, and uh, it's got the stabilizer, it's got the, you know, all the, all the fun stuff. And I do competition. I was doing competitions with it. And, uh, but it, the thing that was, that sucked was I had seven pins for my site. It was a seven pin site oh, yeah. that I have. And I like it. So I'm like, I'm going to use that. Cause I, it's more, I care more about the hunting than I do the, the, the archery competitions. But then because I had seven pins and most of the archery 3D shoots are five or less is the hunting class. Got it. Now, because I had more than five, I got put in the target class, which is these guys that have these sites that you just go, they they were sitting there range finding the targets and go, oh, it's, oh, it's 42.3 meters. Okay. So I just put that on <laughs> you know, to the, to my, my site, exactly 42.3, just pink. And so with these, you know, six foot long stabilizers that they've got and all this other crap, but I always finished, you know, top 10% even with that. So I did with pretty, on pretty big competition. So it was pretty, uh, pretty fun in this. It's one of those things I just haven't I haven't been practicing my boat my right shooting just because I'm I you know I haven't been able to go down to the uh, the the store and get get it restrung I need to get it restrung right now and I just right. haven't been able to side it do all the siding in after I get that done so whatever but this thing when you it, again crazy user friendly I'm sitting there looking at a laser range I'm like oh great that's gonna be you know <laughs> tech tech central over here it's gonna be right. so many buttons there's two buttons and yeah. like just just turning it on I press I press the button once and it comes on and right. while I'm doing it, while I'm, while I'm holding it and looking, if I hold just the, the same button I turn it on with, if I just hold it down right. and scan, it gives me live readings of whatever I'm scanning. So if I'm scanning and there's a tree 10 meters in front of me right. and it crosses that tree, it's going to tell me that that tree is 10 meters in front of me. And then there's a hill 300 meters away. It tells me the hill's 300 meters away. So I'm getting live readings of everything. That's Cause a lot of times, yeah, it's, and it's great. And it's crazy accurate. So a lot of times I've seen it happen, done it myself, is when you're range finding. If you're hiding behind something, you know, especially for deer, they're so sensitive and they're not, they're not, um, they're, you know, they're so spooky. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you don't get it. You don't get the opportunity to actually put the laser on Got it. the animal itself. You have to put it on a nearby, you know, uh, point of reference. So if it, it might be like a you know, a tree or a, or a rock that's sticking out this kind of the same distance away, but you can get a clear line of sight to that. So right. you mark that and then you just kind of gauge, okay, it's probably two yards past that or two meters past that. Right. And yeah. so I'm looking at, oh, 45 meter shot, but he's about, he so that puts him at about 47. So then you can go, go do that. And this, so they're, they're great to have, but just like all these tools that you have and that, you, that are at our disposal now that are really just, they're incredible. They're, they're, they're shooting so much, it's so much more fun now than it was that it used to be. Well, yeah, not with all the regulations, but at the same time, uh, it's a lot more fun because there's so much stuff at our disposal now. And a lot of it can be intimidating to people coming in and, and just getting into shooting and, and oh, yeah. doing that. But the one thing that you always notice about the shooting community is that they're all they all love talking about it. <laughs> I know. They're, all, they're all into it. <laughs> they so, have their strong opinions, man. <laughs> yeah, they have strong opinions. Everyone has their thing. And you'll figure out what you yeah. like because you'll, you'll know people let you shoot their rifles and their pistols yeah. and stuff out of the range. You, you can trade off and do stuff like that, especially if it's a little more lax. It's more fun that way. And, uh, and you'll see what you like. You'll see what works. You'll shoot a guy's rifle and go, oh, man, I love that thing. I'm going to get one of those because I love how much that works. And they go, okay, what's your setup and stuff? And then they'll help tell you because, I mean, I'm, we're, there's apps now. I use this app for – for you know, I, I have an app downloaded just for one of two, two of mixed rifles. Just so oh, no, I, I shoot his, his six point five Creedmoor, I shoot his so much that yeah. 
I, you know, I, and he, he, he reloads all his own rounds. He, you know, you just put as much, as much information as you can. Right. And it calculates everything for you. It tells you where to put your scope. And if you, and if you'll be in the same, you'll be right in the ballpark at, you know, a thousand meters and yeah. you just realize, okay, I need to go, you know, half a click left or, you know, two clicks up, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's not as, it's not as hard as, as it seems because of all the math and all the other stuff. So it's something that's a, that you can pick up on very quickly. So I encourage people that have an interest, but are discouraged by, uh, by just the overall quantity of options that are out there and just the, the, you know, any kind of culture that they might be afraid of with, you know, people, the shooters and stuff like that, that are out of their ranges. Yep. That's not even, it's, it, you'll, you'll quickly learn that that's, that that's, um, it's not an issue at all. It's just oh, not. It's, yeah, it's, it's no it's doubt. Fantastic. No doubt. Matter of fact, this, this one scope here, you know, I compared it to your AMG, which it's not even close, but first of all, it's a tank. But the other thing is there is so much stuff on this, man. And, and it's interesting because all I have to know is the basics on this bad boy. And I know there's a lot of YouTube videos on there. We'll probably get made fun of. Oh, they don't know enough tech and such. But yeah, Yep. And learn it's accordingly. It's, it's good stuff, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I found that the, just the fundamentals of shooting, the basic fundamentals of shooting, the breathe, breathing control, trigger control, all that stuff. Yeah, it's is the most is the most important part because if you don't have that and you have these crazy good optics, all the you know the the everything locked down, and you're not practicing right. the fundamentals, and then you'll get guys out there that go out there these you know these American Express shooters that go out there and have all the nicest stuff, but yeah. they can't hit a target 200 meters in front of them because they don't know the base. <laughs> so it's kind of like you know give it a shot, see where you're, see where you're at, and then go from there. It's just it's just fun. It yeah. is fun. It still blows my mind though how much Vortex product he got there. And it's, oh, it's, it's, I, I love it. I, it's, it's, awesome. it's all I buy. It's would all I, I'll get. It so really is. I know it's been a while since you're in the military and such, but would you? Uh, what would you think of if you had a Vortex uh, optic back in the day when you were still in the military? Oh, it would it would have been it would have been great. I mean, I had a I had a, a few different sights for my saw because I had a pretty modified saw. You know, I had the short barrel, the telescopic right. butt stock, the you know the we had the bipod, but it was, there, there wasn't enough out then to, uh, to uh, there wasn't enough aftermarket products out to really, so you kind of have to make, do some makeshift stuff. Like yeah. I had a pistol grip on my saw, but I also had a bipod, but with the, with the pistol grip there, cause you, you're changing it to a Picatinny rail system right. for the handguard so that you can put all your optics and all your other like PBS 14s and stuff, which is like a, you know, you have a, in your PQ2, you have a laser sight that you can only see with your night vision goggles. Oh, so you can't see yeah. with the blind eye. Um, so you want all that stuff. You need all that stuff. Right. Uh, but like the bipods, I liked having the bipods too, because you, you know, you can get a, you know, stable fire and you can rest it on when you need to. But so, but you couldn't, the old hand guards had a little groove in it so that you could just collapse the bipod and it, and it tucks right into the hand guard. Right. It tucks right in there. But now that you have a Picatinny rail and a pistol grip, you couldn't do that. So right. you'd either have to flip it forward all the time. The hand, and I don't like having two bipods sticking out here like that. <laughs> yeah. Or what we did was we just wrapped 550 paracord uh, around the end of it so that you could just slide it up to make it go out. Or you could just pull it around the hand guard, the, the pistol grip, the foregrip, and, just, and then just slide the 550 cord down so it would tighten around it. Because the foregrip kind of has a, it kind of goes out. So it's, it stops it from drop, from dropping down. So you make, you make, you make do with what you can. But as far as like, I think we were using aim points over there. And the problem with the aim points was that, that um, there, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a huge, there wasn't a problem with them, but we were, I found myself using, replacing the batteries a lot more than yeah, I wanted to. And so the, you know, the technology just wasn't, it was pretty fairly new at the time. And so these things go, you know, and you can go from red to green too, if you want yeah. to if you didn't have little flip out magnifiers, which would have been really nice, especially on some of those rooftop firefights that we got into. So it's just like optics are, optics are key. They're, they're pivotal and, and they're, they're, they're a huge element in, uh, in, in, in successful shooting. And uh, if I were to go, if I were to go over, you know, to any combat situation again, uh, no matter what kind of kind of it was, you know, long range shooting, if it was, if it was, uh, you know, urban warfare, whatever it would be, I would, and I got to pick, I would take the board. I would take all Vortex optics with me. That's sweet. Down. Yeah, well, absolutely. You don't have I to. Use them now. I can, I mean, I could get any optics I, I, I want, you know, I could go out and buy, 
the most expensive yeah. blah blah blahs and blah blah blahs yeah. but uh like i said bang for your buck and just quality of product yeah that this is right there right there with all of it and it's and it's and it's and, it's, and it, i would say arguably that it's that it's even sturdier oh yeah it's actually that one by six that you have there that uh, i don't oh, yeah. know if you have it there that uh that I, I, this, is a, this thing is rad. I can't wait to put this on another because that's yeah. what I'm going to go. I'm going to build. I'm going to end up building two more ARs. One is a little <laughs> bit more of an M4 style, and one with a longer barrel for a little more long range shooting. So this is this is cool because it's a scope that uh, that uh, you that also has a red dot on it. I know, and it's, and it's crazy easy to use because all you have to do is let me see here. Pull. Is it already pulled out? I think I might have already pulled it out or not. Yeah, I think you got a you got flipper flipper over on the other side. So the the what I'm doing wrong? I'm yeah. not mounted right now. So <laughs> no, yeah, right there. You just flip. You just pull the pull the little knob out, and a red dot appears right in the middle of the crosshairs. Right, 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 so right, it's just, right. It's just it's incredible to you know it's a cool little feature to have because it, it's the best of both worlds. You're getting a quality awesome scope, and then you can also switch it over to a red dot yeah for quick acquisitions you know and so and then you can just always power down the scope if you're in close quarters and it's just i mean yeah I mean, this would have been a really cool one to have uh in yeah. iraq actually this would have been a really neat one we also had those thermal scopes that were pretty damn cool too yeah uh, over yeah. there the black hot white hot thermals so the, i liked i like those a lot it um, is sweet i mean that one right there that's I'm, I'm jealous on that one that thing's a bad boy and i heard that one right there is military grade right there so <laughs> yeah i mean i mean yeah i i would i i don't know all about what like that means what military grade means because yeah. i or mil spec right mil spec mil, right. yeah because um but as far as if, if if what it means is that it's durable it yeah. works and it can take an absolute ass beating <laughs> Then yes, then it's, then it is. <laughs> yeah. because that's that's what I found with these things is they're just they're just you can just feel them and just feel that they're you know some of those other scopes that I've noticed you hold and you're just like ah well I better really baby this thing because <coughs> I don't want to you know I don't want to have to I don't have to replace it yeah yeah and I that's certainly that. wouldn't want to deal with any other customer service outside of uh, you get kind of feel like you get spoiled with vortex just because of the customer service they're, they're they they spoil the customers a bit with that seriously they, man they 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 seriously do I, I went and saw them at uh shot show because i was part of another business and it's funny because they're at the on the top you have all the other like high-end scope things and they're in the in the bottom floor and it's like they have this crazy following man it's they're, yeah. they're just a different energy and it was so yeah. cool to see yeah, it's, it's I don't need to experience that, man. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool, the cool thing is, is that, like I said, the, the interface of all the products is so easy to use. It's so okay. user friendly that it really is a product for like a, a crazy advanced shooters or yep. people that are just starting out. Well, like and your like, like your son, man. He was. Oh, he I know. I know, right? Targets with that thing. That yeah, time he, yeah, he kind of he surprises me sometimes. He just uh, yeah, I was pretty proud of him. It was it was fun <laughs> watching him out there. It was he's. You know, and and I, I got to say, I haven't done like as much of a job taking them out hunting and shooting as I, as I should, just right. because I I don't know. It's it's you know I don't know. These days it's hard to get kids out of the house. It seems. <laughs> I guess the best way to do it is to lead by example, which is what I try to do. You know, just do it do it myself and do that, and it's just that's nice and like you know. He was doing really good, man. I, I he was he was tearing it up out there. I was kind of I was actually kind of surprised by it because I've taken him to other places like to shoot fully automatics. Yeah, and he was he he was he was a little freaked out. Like, no, no, no. I'm like, all right, well, you know, maybe when you're a little older, you'll you know you'll. This was years ago, so maybe maybe a you know an eight year old shooting an MP7. And a, you know, <laughs> is, I don't know, a grease gun and all these other crazy things, you know. Oh, that's uh, funny, but uh, yeah, and it, you know what it reminds me of the like the the customer service with Vortex is like I fly fish a lot too, so right. Right. I um I like good simple you know, rigid products, things that can take a beating. And uh, so I have a, I have a lot of fly rods that I, co I collect old Powell rods because I'm from Chico and I knew, yeah. the, I knew, I knew, uh, I knew Walton and Press Powell uh, when I was a kid right. growing up. Um, but the, there's a company out there because I'm not a, re I'm not a big reel guy. I'm not like a, you know, I think the, I like the rods more than I like the reels because the reels to me are just, 
they're just uh, they're just there to do a specific job. And a lot of the like, if I'm trout fishing and stuff, most of the time I'd say I'd say most of the time I hand line things in, even with big with big trout. I I try to hand I try to you know strip in yeah. strip it in, but the but i i got turned on to this company by the guy my fly fishing mentor actually he uh he uh he, he introduced me to this company called bauer reels they're made in oregon okay and i'm right-handed but i reel left-handed the guys I, I go fishing up in alaska every year i get made fun of because the first time <laughs> i called up to the lodge to book a trip up there is captain steve's fishing lodge i yeah. asked do you guys have any left-handed reels you know and, and he called me back and like, and, and I, I got up there like, you the guy that was asking for left-handed reels? I was like, yeah, I had no shame in it. I don't care. I like left-handed reels. And, uh, and, the, and so they still to this day give me a hard time about it because it's just, you know, because they have these really good accurate fishing reels up there. But I just, I'm right-handed, but I retrieve left, you know? And, and yeah. so with Bauer reels, they make right and left-handed reels. But a lot of times with the drag on reels, that I think 95% of the reel companies out there, uh, put the drag on the other side or somewhere else on right. the reel. So if I'm fishing and I, and I, you know, have a fish on and I'm reeling left-handed, I have an internal drag on a bower reel that's right here on the, on the inside. So I'm not getting, you know, I, if, if anyone's, any fly fisherman will tell you, you get a big fish on that takes a run on you and you have your hands right there. Oh, that little, that little knob, that little, that little handle spins yeah. around. So about, and it, they, you've been, everyone's been cracked in the knuckles. And they, <laughs> I, don't care, I don't care how tough your hands are. It hurts. Like you're, you're going, Ow, damn. <laughs> you know and so it's nice to have everything here you know right. i'm fighting the fish here and i just oh i need a little bit more drag or a little less drag and bam it's done right. boom boom can reel boom boom can reel instead of going oh wait i gotta switch hands come over here and do this and yeah. uh and so we called up the bauer company one time uh to order something or do something i think there was we needed to order an extra spool or something like that right and when you call the company you talk to mr bauer or mrs bauer you didn't, no I didn't we weren't talking to like you know Jim that works you know works for part time or anything it was it was Mrs. Bauer who answered the phone oh yeah sure no problem just send it right up and we'll get it back to you you do and then they'll, they'll talk you through everything if you're looking for something specific and you don't know quite what you want it's like that's what you're getting here with with Vortec you yeah. call them up and they'll, they'll you know it's just it's just cool it's nice it's a little bit like growing up again you know like what things used to be like <laughs> Dude, that's cool man, yeah, man I, I definitely think like the next time we talk about the products we're stoked about is maybe we got to give them a call get them on the line man <laughs> yeah, that's good. It, would be, it would be great and they and they have some new cool pro they have some cool products coming out too i'm definitely going to be picking up some of those it's kind of like i get so excited about the optics and get the optics and then i'm like oh shit i gotta put these on a, i gotta <laughs> buy a rifle to put these on dude you, like, you gotta have it's, there's things that you gotta have and then you can worry yeah. about the rest later <laughs> <laughs> well i'm dude, not an impulsive buyer that that bad boy you have over there, that uh, that uh, low power variable, that LPVO, they have a one through so ten. Uh, that that little one through six you got over there, oh, right here? dude. They yeah. in one through ten now. Couldn't yeah, believe that'll be that that'll be the next the next deal. And once this thing clears up, you know this whole thing. I'm gonna make some I'm gonna make some videos, some shooting videos. Uh, yeah, of going out to the range. You and I can go out. We can bring Mick. We can bring some bring some of the boys oh, yeah. out and just and just start popping popping them out and just I, I can I, I'd be happy to do anything you know I'd like to make tutorial videos of how easy this actually is yeah um, you yeah. know it's a guy that's great to bring too because he can uh he's really good at explaining a lot he's taught me a lot too you know things oh, no, that he's, I didn't know. He's, he's a he's jack of encyclopedia man yeah I'm that stuff it's funny yeah, get, oh go ahead I'm sorry no go ahead no it's funny because he was saying that uh I know when he goes to three guns and such he has some different optics, but one thing that he said was that on his big gun, he has that big old Vortex Gen 2, is like the four yeah. by, four by yeah. 17 to 25. I think he has this. this. I think he has the, the HD. Actually, it's the one bigger than that. It's, it's a bronze colored one. And he, oh, is that right? Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, because he has, he has quite a few toys, so I'm trying yeah. to, you know. Yeah, it, well, he said he hasn't, he hasn't had to adjust that in a couple of years. And I know, oh, really, yeah. yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't That's surprise it. me at all. No, and this is a guy. This is a guy that changes out his barrels every six months. <laughs> yeah, I know. He shoots so much. He has to change his barrel every 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 six twice a year. He changes his barrel his barrels out on his on his rifles and gets them mm -hmm. sent away and sends sends it back. And it's just like, yeah, I'm not I'm not on his level as far as you know knowledge of all that stuff at all. <laughs> not even close. But 
uh, you don't have to be, but you get him and my uncle Danny together. They're both reload, and they both. Oh yeah. Oh God, it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's too much information. I'm like, oh. I was actually blown away by how, how much your uncle Danny knew about optics. I went, oh, anything, just, anything that had to relate to to, to shooting. It was amazing. Oh yeah, he's he's ex army. He's a reloader. He's a varmint. He's he does varmint varmint hunting. He's uh. He's, yeah, he's he's hardcore into it. He still he still subscribes to all the magazines, so he has stacks of, and he reads cover to cover every single one of them. He just he just knows his stuff, uh, oh, big time. And so you know, but again, it all comes down to personal preference. It all comes down to what you like. Like people call me all the time and say, "What, what should I get?" And I say, "I can steer you in the right direction for what you want right. and what what brands I like, what right. kind of weapons I can." Like I personally, just, I like the red dot sight the most right. because I it's less going on in the optic it's just exactly. one tiny red dot it's a little bit more specific and precise so I like like for you know close to mid-range shooting that's I like that I like that a lot yeah. if you're going for point tar you know for really precision shooting then you'd want to go with you know something with a scope and depending on what you want what weapon or rifle you want to use there's certain barrel companies that I that I that I really like a lot that I think make you know a step above other ones and there's you know they're all backlist you know a lot of those companies are the yeah. good ones do it they're always back back you yeah, know a waiting list to get your get your product from them but oh, hey yeah. good 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 that means people are getting getting work and you know putting putting products out there it's nice oh for sure man for yeah. sure well dude it's man i didn't mean to keep you on this long but i just again yeah you know what mo i'm not really doing much right now <laughs> yeah, i don't, <laughs> I don't, think know, I don't know what's going on over at your house <laughs> No, a dog was trying to get in over on the bedroom over here, and daughter walks in, and and uh, all the other work. I got a company the whole time. My cat. It's awesome. Oh, yeah, your cat just kick it up, kick it back there, man. He's just vibing. He doesn't. He's just making a cameo guest appearance. I love it, man. I love it. Well, dude, we got to do it again, man. If that's cool, and uh, let's do it soon. I got nothing but time right now, so. Okay, man. That sounds good to me, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, let's do it. Hey, thanks a lot, Mo. I appreciate it big time. It's nice to, you know, to have a company out there that's doing good things. Good things. No doubt, man. I want honestly, I'm gonna go call them and see if we could if we could talk to them. That'd be fun, dude. Yeah, let's talk. Yeah, I'd love to. That would be cool. That would be really cool. Be, be cool. They're out in uh they're out in Wisconsin, right? Wisconsin, yeah. 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 That'd be, yeah. Wisconsin. That'd be cool. I'd like to see that. I'd like to visit that 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 factory out there. You know, it's funny, I, I, uh, I, one of my buddies, Camacho, I was in the military with, I went to Iraq with, he was one of my, one of my best friends, he, uh, he lived in Cicero, Chicago, we went out there to visit him before we deployed into Iraq, haven't heard from him in, since I got out, since he got out, yeah, right. and it's been 15, 16 years since I'd heard from him, and, uh, and everyone, all of us were like, you know, we had Operation Find Carlos, you know, like, <laughs> you know, Going, everyone people calling other army guys that we knew that lived in illinois and chicago area like hey can you find him for us we want to we want to get in touch with him. he finally after i don't even know how long just to show you our, like our generation he finally signed up for a facebook page facebook <laughs> and uh and i don't have facebook i don't have that but uh but all my buddies do and and so it's you know it shows the people you may know right like one person pops up and he clicks on it to send him a friend request and it's like then now all of a sudden in like a day he's got like a hundred new friends that are all all of us military guys and so i got a text from my buddy saying hey here's i got we found car we found camacho here's his number i call him up and it was just like we caught up and it was just like nothing had ever changed nothing had changed but he moved up to uh wisconsin now he lives in milwaukee in so, wisconsin man no yeah, i know of all places i've never i don't picture him in, i just don't see him in wisconsin in milwaukee it's just you know i don't put that doesn't add up, but uh, right. great guy, and uh, it'd be cool to you know kill two birds with one stone, go see a kick-ass you know company, and go catch up with my my army buddy out there. Yeah, it's, man, I haven't seen him in a while. It's I just cool. Small, it's a small world. It's just it's just fun. It's fun. It's and, uh, awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. Well, yeah. I I'll tell you, what, I I am. I'm going to reach out and see what they what they say, but it'd be fun to get on the on the line with them and go. Yeah, I'm. I'm I'm down. I'm down all day long. I, talk, I can talk till the sun goes down. You know, I don't. I love it, man. I love it. That's what makes it great. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, well, it was man. good talking to you, and thanks for uh, thanks for doing that, man. It was, it was cool. You I got like it, man. Hey, thanks a ton, Jake. We'll catch you, right, brother. All right. You take care. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going shooting. Heck yeah! Let's do it, man.
All right. <laughs> yeah. Have a good one, brother. All right. Bye-bye.